It's me, Bussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. Oh, 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 it feels good to be back. Today, we'll be ranking the Drag Race Down under talent show performances and reviewing the How's Your Head piece runway looks. By the way, for all my Gen Z babies, the How's Your Head recurring joke on Drag Race is actually a reference to Elvira herself. Oh my gosh, Elvira, I'm sorry. Are you all right? Yeah, I think so. How's your head? Well, I haven't had any complaints yet. Excuse me? What's that, you ask? How's my head? Horny and guaranteed to make you finish. It's gonna be a bumpy ride today, so make sure to fasten your seatbelts and make sure to stay tuned until the end of today's video if you wanna see my special talent. Now, let's get started. First up, it's Karen from Finance. Her talent today was balloon animal, period. <laughs> The producers, I think, were trying their hardest to give Karen a storyline this episode and landed on the stepping outside of your box one. And by that, I mean that in the workroom today, RuPaul asked Karen to sex it up a little bit. And our Drag Race veterans will know this is nothing new. Ru is always asking queens to do things that they don't normally do, which is great. But I'm not really buying that Karen challenged herself or stepped outside of any kind of box. I think she just wore the outfit she was originally planning on wearing in the first place. And her character already kind of plays with that sex element. Anyway, so Karen hits the stage, appearing to take Rue's advice and nipple tassels in a harness. <gasps> <sighs> and walks around the stage for about 30 seconds and then finally makes a singular balloon animal. Three, four, or five might have been impressive, but just one? Overall, I thought this was really lackluster. Michelle said it best. That's it. Karen's talent show was full of rot air tonight. On the runway though, I was like, who in the Cindy Lou Who is this? Oh my God, this was amazing. A gagatrondra, a full gag, if you will. Maybe even a gag bound and chained. <gasps> I love this. This is that crazy campy character that Karen from Finance is at her best. And this is also what I was talking about though with her character already kind of playing with sexy elements in her drag. She often has those little svelte body cutouts. She kind of already toes that line. Oh, the places you'll go if you're the producer's favorite. This look was hot. Next up, she's getting stuffed. And I'm jealous. It's Art Simone. Her talent was eating. Basically, <laughs> basically she walks up to a table with three plates of food. The first one she eats, the second one she throws on the floor, and the third one, <gasps> it's empty. Whatever will she do? Of course, she put her fist in her mouth. Fisting is a talent indeed. Not everyone has the wherewithal or gape to accomplish such a feat. Okay, on a real note, Art, I love you to death. I really do, but what the hell was this? Like, I was sitting there waiting for a punchline, but it just never hit me. Maybe there was some sort of deep social commentary about capitalism and eating the rich, or maybe not. Saying it out loud like that really makes me think maybe not. As it was, it was my second least favorite of the night. It was a rat. But good God on the runway. And I'm gonna be saying that a lot tonight because this was maybe the best runway of maybe all the international franchises, a lot of the US seasons. Head pieces off to you gals. It was <laughs> amazing. And arts specifically was killer. Not like in the Asia O'Hara sense, but like in the metaphorical sense. She says that she's giving us gum nut baby realness and I was like, what the hell is that? So I went on over to a little YouTube channel called The Rory Show. He does these little reference recaps for runways, which are amazing. He taught me about the gum nut baby children's books, which I guess are really popular down under. They're about these, well, gum nut babies. Literal personified gum nut babies of the eucalyptus tree. <laughs> named Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie, which I absolutely hate. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Roy, for the reference, Jack. Back to Art's runway, I think what really made it special was the attention to detail here, the tattered edges, the sheerness, the cage skirt, and of course, the apparently cat toys that she used to construct the headpiece. Art can turn a look. She has yet to fail to live up to that name. This look was hot. <laughs> Next up, Abra Katabra Mina Kazam. Kidamine's talent was magic. And here I was thinking the only witches were in London in Waverly Place. I was living for Michelle's reaction shots to the beginning of this performance. I felt the same way. It took a while to warm up, okay? That's not a secret, but I think she really came through at the end. She had like three different outfit reveals, which happened by magic. I don't know what she was doing, but I was impressed. And the funny thing was, so were the judges. I think Rue even gave it a wow, despite hating magic. And then the critiques came around on the runway and they were like, the outfits look cheap, the fabric was 
is bad. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, wait a second, what's happening here? Like it's a campy magic drag show done by a man in a wig, not New York Fashion Week. So why are we all of a sudden focusing on these arbitrary details? Probably for storyline, which we'll get to here in a second. Anyways, I thought the talent was hot. In fact, it was my second favorite of the night. And on the runway, the slayage continues. She was giving me cyberpunk raver girl Barbarella Fembot realness. It pulled in so many amazing references and looked stunning on the runway. Plus, she gave us a light show with the hair. I think Kitamine is one of the most consistently impressive queens in this competition. She's always got something up her sleeve or in her moon boots. This look was hot. Kitamine ate this episode up, but the judges still put her in the bottom. Here's my little conspiracy theory. So the producers have been driving this Electra versus Scarlet storyline for the past three or four episodes. They were probably dying to have them lip sync against each other, but Scarlet did way too well in this episode for that to happen. And I think the producers realized it was gonna be now or never. And turns out it was never. So they went for the emotional sister versus sister lip sync angle instead. As with a lot of this season though, the storytelling has not been focused on the right thing. So there was no payoff and it didn't even make sense that it happened. Anyways, next up. She likes the pole and the hole. Same. Any Jerry Blank fans in the audience? Let me know down in the comments. It's Scarlett Adams. This maybe was one of the most difficult talents that was displayed tonight. The amount of body strength and coordination that what she did requires is incredible. And there's no denying that Scarlett did amazingly. But I am going to call her out real quick. In the confessional, she made a comment that was like, queens don't really do pole. And I'm like, wait a second. Are we forgetting that Shea Coulee literally just did a pole dancing talent show number in All Stars 5? And I'm not saying Scarlett can't also do that talent, but I am just saying like, let's not forget about it. But yeah, you're probably questioning your sexuality after watching this and that's okay. This performance was and my favorite of the night. And on the runway, whoa, 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 whoa. That was my impression of Tamisha Iman doing Cher. I have almost no words for this. This, <gasps> wow. Literally, I was watching this. I was just like, wow, wow, wow. This is one of the most beautiful garments to ever grace the RuPaul's Drag Race stage. I'm not sure if she stole this from Cher's closet or threw some pearls on the stage of Vegas and robbed it from an actual showgirl, but it is amazing. And you know what they say, the devil's in the details. This look was hot. And finally, now you see ya, now you don't. Get it? Cause she was eliminated. It's Electra Shock. Electra's talent was interpretive dance, but her wig needed no translator. It was screaming for help. <laughs> Okay, on a real note, this was probably the second most physically and mentally demanding of all the talents displayed. Choreographed interpretive dance. That's a skill that not many people have. And I also think it's one that's kind of hard to appreciate if you aren't familiar with it. And I'm not. I'm uncultured swine. But I still kind of liked it. I think one of the biggest issues with this, though, is RuPaul and Michelle are always looking for two things and comedy. If you can put them together, great. But typically they want you to have one or the other. Electra had neither tonight. And I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying that's what the show typically looks for. The crazy thing though, is that when they're giving critiques, Michelle tells Electra she hopes that Sia sees this performance and casts her for a video. <laughs> I literally could not think of higher praise to give somebody for this type of talent show thing. I hear that and I'm thinking, okay, cool. They're gonna like definitely put her in the top this week. And then they go in for the roadkill on top of her head. <laughs> I do think wearing the wig was a mistake, but I don't think it was one that should have put her in the bottom. Again, was this a talent show or a fashion show? It just seriously blows my mind that they could give more reward to a singular balloon animal than an entire choreographed dance. Even if her wig was thirstier than Jockstrap's twink at Pride. Her talent was lost in translation to the judges, but I thought it was and my third favorite of the evening. On the runway, she swings and she scores again. She's giving me Moulin Rouge, Chicago, Broadway, New York, jazz hands. I'm living for the camp factor of her putting a literal swing on her headpiece that touches on her booty. It's so great. And I think one of the reasons I love Electra so much is that she reminds me of the older days of Drag Race when it seemed like they would cast more like diamonds in the rough than Hollywood ready starlets. Anyways, yes, this look is hot. 
it. Now, let's spill some quick tea. Rue asked everyone who should go home tonight. Everybody, of course, says Electra. And I don't know if the regular viewer of Drag Race knows this, but drag is highly political. And I'm not talking about racial tensions. There's a whole culture of paying dues, respecting elders, etc., etc. And often, like, you kind of have to rub elbows and shake hands with the right people if you want to get cast in a show. It's clear that Electra is not one of those highly respected elders, and the queens are letting her have it because of that. They all kind of pretty much say something to the effect of like, Electra's not ready for it, even though she's doing great in the competition. The thing is, Electra makes good TV, but what makes even better TV? Having a robbed queen. Electra is the Miss Cracker, the Katia, the Ben de la Creme of this season, our sacrificial fan favorite lamb who we can all cry about on social media. And she was always meant to be that character. She was never going to win. But that's how the cookie crumbles. Frankly though, I'm a little tired of this cookie. It's stale. I'm tired of the overproduction. I'm like, girl, can we just have a little bit of naturality on this TV show, please? For the love of God. Or the devil. Whichever you prefer. But that brings me to my final question slash thought for today's video. Is this season horribly written slash produced? Or is it horribly edited? In other words, is this season exposing shenanigans that may have happened on other seasons of Drag Race that the editors knew how to hide, or are they just being so heavy-handed in their production that they don't care about having an actual competition anymore? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Regardless though, our queens deserve better. As I mentioned, Keita and Electra are in the bottom this week, and I posted an exclusive lip sync and talent show reaction to today's episode over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash queen. You can join my family of patrons for just a couple of dollars a month, support the channel, and get tons of exclusive member benefits. Click the link in the description to join today. See you there! Our winner this week is Scarlett Adams, no surprise, and my hottest hat on the runway is Scarlett Adams. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot, and this week they've chosen Kidamine. And now, for my talent. Oh. 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 I want to say thanks so much for watching today's video and give a special shout out to Jessica Martinez, Snazzy Adam, Kareem McJagger, Aaron, Edwin Rodriguez, and Jesse, who've just joined my Patreon at the Hot Tier, and Aiden Smith, Ali Al, Anna Miriam, Anthony, Bradley, Cameron, Jerry Poppins, Christopher, Glam Moosedale, Clark, Deutsche Leather, Dr. Martin, Evan, Fabio, Fractalize, GJ Bearclaw, Got the Morbs, Jay, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kiki, and John, Madam Muffy, Markowitz, Maddie Morissette, Nathan Opal, Queen Sassy Canister, Ron Shannon Shazzy, Sky Tammy Thomas, Timotheus, Timothy Tony Unique Vendetta, and Wheelie, who are all supporting me at my hottest hat tier, and Angel Caroline Cyrus, Felicia, Goaty P, JB, Joseph, JP in Dallas, Laura, Luke, Matthew, Mike, Nurse Luca, Robert Reeves, Scrooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom, and Triton, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all next time. Love ya.